Why Judgment Day will be harsher for you than others? I wonder at this generation we live in. The world is changing. There is a clear acceleration in the advancement of the world. The world is moving at a rate like never before in history. And I often find myself thinking about eternity. I often find myself thinking what happens to the dead when they leave this world. At times, I find myself watching large crowds of people and thinking that none of these people will ever cease to exist. But for all eternity, they will exist in heaven or hell. But what breaks my heart is the number of people that never ever think about eternity. There are so many people who live literally for the here and the now. They literally see this life as all that matters. Death to some people is not even an afterthought. They just plain and simply don't think about it. 1 Samuel 23 There is but a step between me and death. People tend to see death as being something that is 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 50 years, 70 years away. But the Bible is so clear. There is literally a step between me and death. Life is fragile. Do you understand how fragile we are? We, as human beings, are fragile. You may walk around with a six-pack and with muscles coming out of your forehead, but that does not change the simple fact. You are fragile. Human beings are fragile, fragile beings. Life is so precious, and it is so fragile. The Bible is so clear. 1 Samuel 23 There is but a step between me and death. Rich people die. Poor people die. Young people die, old people die, sick people die, healthy people die. I say all this just to simply express this point, that human beings are fragile creatures, and you will not always be here on earth. And I want to ask you a question. Where are you going when you leave this earth? The gospel message is true. It is true truth. Even if no one on earth believed in the gospel message, it would still be true. And the truth is, there are a lot of things out there that are true, that do not save. Did you hear me? There are many things that are true that do not save. What is true and what does save is the gospel message. And that is why the devil has blinded the minds of people to the truth. 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4 but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. What happens to the dead when they leave this world? Hebrews 9, 27 And it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Judgment follows death. Judgment. Spurgeon stated, A man dies once, and after that, everything is fixed and settled, and he answers for his doings at the judgment. One life, one death. Then everything is weighed, and the result declared. After this, the judgment. Judgment awaits, and there will be two destinations heaven or hell. There is no middle ground. There is no spiritual neutral ground. Heaven or hell. There is a real heaven, a heaven that is everlasting, a heaven where there is no sorrow, no pain, no tears, no heartbreak, where there is joy forever. Heaven is real. And believe me, being in heaven will be the best thing to ever happen to you because you will be with the Lord. Just as heaven is real, hell is real. I am surprised at the amount of Christians who believe in heaven, but don't believe in hell. Well, I don't believe that a God that loves will create a place like hell and will allow people to go there. This is a problem with our minds. Our minds as human beings want to create a God that fits into our own idea of what God should and shouldn't do. The rough reality is simply this. 
God does not answer to you or me. He does not answer to a person. And God being a loving God gives people the choice to choose heaven or hell. And hell is real. Hell is a place of everlasting torment, a place where there is no love or the goodness of God, a place where there is only weeping and gnashing of teeth. Judgment awaits. Hebrews 9.27 And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. The harsh reality is this. Our judgment will be harsher than others. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. In the generation we live, we have been given a lot. We have the ability to type in one verse on YouTube, and we will be met by literally thousands of hours of videos explaining on that one verse. As a whole, the general knowledge of the Word of God right now is higher than any other point in human history. Do you understand that? For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. Our knowledge of the Word of God even exceeds the apostles. They only wrote sections of the scriptures, but we have access to the complete Word of God. They didn't have access to the complete Word of God. Brothers and sisters, I say this kindly, judgment for you will be a lot harsher than others. Now, do you know what is a sobering thought for me as an individual? I am a teacher of the Word, and just like you, my judgment will be harsher than others. James 3, 1. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. This is a verse that puts the fear of God into my life, and it should also do so to other teachers. God will judge us on the last day with special strictness on account of our influence over others. It is easy to take the position of a teacher lightly, without considering its cost in terms of accountability. So I know my judgment will be harsher. And if you are also a teacher, or if you have any platform to reach people, whether it be digital or a physical church congregation, your judgment will be stricter. Even if you are not a teacher, nevertheless, you have access to so many biblical resources. I want to remind you, your judgment will be harsher. Modern-day Christianity is sending so many people to hell because it leads people into the false illusion that you can live in the world and in the church at the same time. But that's not the Christian faith. The Christian faith is a life of separation. As believers walk by faith, they should see in Scripture the clear commands to be separate from the world. For church-age saints, we are to be separate from the lost, separate from those with doctrines contrary to Christ, and separate from fellow believers that are walking disorderly. I have even heard the term worldly Christians, but that is like calling a sinner a godly sinner. I encourage you, my brothers and sisters, remember this when you live your life. Remember that each day, you are moving towards a day where you will have to give account of your life. Remember, remember, I encourage you to live a holy life. This sermon is as much for you as it is for me. This sermon is for this generation that has been given a lot. Much will be required of us. Live a holy life. Live a righteous life. Live a pure life. James 4.17 says, Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Now, we have been enlightened. We know what God requires from us. We know that He demands holiness from us. With all the biblical teachings we have received, we know the instructions of God for our lives. But if we fail to do them, then we are guilty of sin. Anyone who knows what is good, but fails to do so, 
will face a harsher judgment on that last day. Believers know what is good because the Bible states it explicitly. The Word of God is given to guide our lifestyles, thoughts, words, and actions. It reflects the mind of God for us. If we go against the Word of God, it means we are defiant to His laws and commands. Judgment awaits all of us when we die, and heaven or hell will be our destination.